He's nefarious and subversive. He is the most preeminent master of disguise in the world. I'm talking about Zartan. He's been a thorn in the side of the G.I. Joes nearly since inception. Working with Cobra, Zartan has played a pivotal role in many a scheme. So let's talk about him. Before we begin, I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether it's your first time here or you're returning. Don't forget to subscribe. We do upload content like this every week. So let's jump right into the video. As you would expect from a master of disguise, Zartan's true story is hidden behind false identities, myth, and a multitude of false faces. He's been the president, Cobra Commander, Ripcord, General Hawk, and a plethora of other characters along the way. Zartan's history with G.I. Joe begins with 1984's Series 3, as well as issues 24 and 25 of the G.I. Joe A Real American Hero comic book. As with most characters, they're either introduced or fell off the roster as their action figures debut or are retired from active toy shelf duty. Zartan debuted his V1 figure with the Series 3 line, but he was initially packaged with a toy called the Chameleon Swamp Skier. He had these really cool photos sensitive stickers. They were very fragile and they didn't last long, but they were cool. They could change from blue and aqua and maroon depending on the temperature. On the back of the Swamp Skier box is where we learn a bit about the elusive Zartan. This file card indicates that Zartan has extreme paranoid schizophrenia. It also lists multiple personality disorder to psych profile. While these are mental health disorders, it's easy to see how they would be a benefit to Zartan when embodying somebody else. Despite the benefit to Zartan himself, listing these two disorders together proved confusing for fans, and so starting with his V2 file card in his new punk rock look, Hasbro had these removed. And it's not to say he no longer has these conditions, but they were no longer listed. This version wound down production in 1994, the same year the comic book series ended, and we wouldn't get a new version of Zartan until 2001, where we finally get a bit more about our man of mystery. Most of what we know is pulled from a few comic book issues from the original Larry Hama run, with gaps filled in by later IDW Dixon, Devil's Due, and IDW Hama Tales. While Zartan's past is shrouded in mystery, one could say he grew up somewhere in France based on his schooling. Zartan has two siblings, Zorana and the forgotten one, Xandar. Zorana first appeared in A Real American Hero issue 50. The next issue, 51, was Xandar's first. He also, in some continuity, has a daughter named Zanya. In the IDW run, G.I. Joe Origins, we learn that Zartan grew up as a street urchin, a pickpocket on the street stealing for food, and that his name is Emil Zartan. One day, the police caught up with him and questioned him. Thinking quickly, he saw this poster up on the wall. It was a 19th century Spanish swashbuckler with the name Zartan, and he told him that was his name, and it stuck. Sort of like Ron White and his tater salad name. Speaking of names, Zartan is apparently an anagram for Tarzan. It seems as though he may have started out as a street urchin, which could explain why he doesn't know his real name, his real identity. Eventually, the police caught up with this kid pickpocket and placed him in a home where probably Xandar and Zorana came from, and that home sent him to the famous French military school founded by Napoleon Bonaparte himself called St. Cyr Academy. This is confirmed with his V3 file card. Here, he received military training in combat, espionage, and field ops. It's also where he developed his affinity for the Merc life. He quickly turned his regiment into mercenaries and began selling state state secrets to enemies of the state. He was caught and of course tried as a traitor, but Zartan, he escaped. He found himself at one point in Australia where he met some dreadnoughts and another time in Asia where he studied under a ninja master and became proficient with edged weapons, mystic martial arts, and archery. I'm going to presume that it was around this time that Zartan developed his camo techniques where he was using this black paint mask to trick face readers by hiding the contours and the distinctive marks on his face in this black shadowy mask. He would have used some of course when he was at St. Cyr, but that would have included the browns and the green and not so much the black that he was focused on with the ninja clan. He also has acrobatic contortionist skills, so he's sort of like this evil Nastia Lucan, but a guy, sometimes, when he wants to be with his sometimes hood and sometimes hair. It was somewhere around this time that he underwent some DNA splicing experiments and gained his chameleon abilities. And this is actually an area where the cartoon and the comic books, two different universes technically, differ slightly. Larry Hama in the comic books focused on the tech, while the cartoon delved more into the mystic and the genetics behind his abilities. So anyways, Shortly after this, Zartan found himself within the fanged jaws of Cobra and the commander hiring to infiltrate the Arashikage clan, sending him back to Asia. Hired on the recommendation of Firefly, Zartan was tasked with taking out Snake Eyes, whom Cobra commander blamed for the death of his family. Firefly was the former faceless master of the Koga Ninja clan, a rival clan to the Arashikage. And it's through this that somehow Firefly is aware of Zartan and was able to recommend him for the job. But when the two meet in G.I. Joe issue 24 and shake hands, Zartan said he was happy happy to meet the famous saboteur. Perhaps it was a feint meant to deceive Cobra Commander, or perhaps they knew each other from their time in the clans. This scene gave us a look at his chameleon powers as well. Zartan planned out the hit on Snake Eyes, 
carefully. He did infiltrate the Arashikage clan by training with their swordsmith, a man named Professor Onihashi. Later, he stole an arrow from Storm Shadow, the student training alongside Snake Eyes, and zeroed in on Snake Eyes' breathing rhythm from a tree. He let the homing arrow fly, except the arrow hit Hardmaster instead of Snake Eyes. Zartan was able to exfiltrate without detection, his E and E skills top notch, of course, and the clan and Snake Eyes believed Storm Shadow to be the one who assassinated their beloved leader. Professor Onihashi killed himself over the shame that Zartan caused him, and this this drove Zartan into madness. So, he took up with the Dreadnoughts in a shack in the Florida Everglades near Chokaloski, which is really fun to say. This Chateau de Zartan looked like a dilapidated hut, but Zartan was using his holographic projection tech to disguise what was an advanced HQ complete with androids and an armored tank battalion under the swampy waters nearby. We also learned that he is using 3D holographic technology, and he's called Cobra's new holographic camo expert. His action force intelligence profile actually adds laser optics to this skill set. Zartan uses his holographic projection tech to create illusions like his shack to make fake military vehicles and to disguise himself. He uses a combo of his mutated DNA, his technological knowledge, along with proficiency with linguistics, hypnotism, and ventriloquism. In IDW Dixon continuity, Zartan murdered a guy named Dr. Tagak who had forced him on request from the Baroness to be part of the Mass Device Experimental Project. It's explained that it mutated his DNA and why he has his sunlight allergy, something that we see across multiple mediums. In issue 45 of the comic book series. Zartan beat up Ripcord and swapped clothes with the Joe. Ripcord had been out looking for his girlfriend, the aptly named Candy Apple. <laughs> so impersonating Ripcord, Zartan made it into the pit. Around this time, the Swamp Shack was destroyed and so the Dreadnoughts hopped on their hogs and headed up to McGuire Air Base, where they went out on the tarmac and destroyed several jets. Zartan was able to make himself look like General Hawk and access the base right through the main gate. He also made himself look like Tripwire and Gung Ho and it took a lucky punch from Sergeant Slaughter to bring him down. Slaughter had these two Gung Ho's in front of him so he guessed which one was the imposter and which one was the real one and he ended up making a lucky punch. A short time later, Cobra's civil war erupted on Cobra Island. Zartan and his dreadnoughts were on the side of Cobra Commander and it was actually Zartan who took down Serpentor ending that conflict. And a long time later, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow found out that it was Zartan who had assassinated Hardmaster, so they went after him. Zartan was able to escape and he contacted the remnants of the Arishikage clan for protection and these red ninjas allied with him as they blamed Storm Shadow for bringing in an outsider. This whole escapade ended with Zartan crashing and tumbling off the Golden Gate Bridge and into the frigid waters of the bay below, but of course he survived. And after this, an old apprentice of Hardmaster's showed up named Blindmaster. Blindmaster was about to kill Zartan, but was stopped just before doing it, and Zartan took advantage of the distraction and killed Blindmaster. But he was racked with guilt, and so he descended into his mental health disorders. He had decided he would become Blindmaster. He teamed up with Billy Kessler, Cobra Commander's son, to take down Cobra Commander on Cobra Island. Zartan knew this Cobra Commander was an imposter named Fred Seven, and he wanted to expose him. He ended up teaming up with Destro and his longtime foe, Storm Shadow. Cobra Commander took over Silent Castle from Destro, who had escaped with the Baroness to Cobra Island, where Zartan was. Cobra Commander had discovered that Dr. Mindbender had implanted brain implants in his former allies, so he went back and activated the implants, which turned Destro and Zartan back to the evil side. When Cobra Commander took back control of his chain of command now back in place, he made a secret deal with Zartan, where they would switch places. And in the ensuing confrontation with G.I. Joe, the Zartan as commander led his forces into battle, where he ended up shooting Hawkins right in the back, which paralyzed him. Zartan was taken into custody, but rescued by the actual Cobra Commander with support from Zartan's Dreadnoughts. Once Cobra Commander wanted to release Dr. Mindbender's Death Angel WMD, Zartan left and returned to the Everglades. He had heard mass murder and said, I'm out of here. Peace. By issue 235, Zartan was hunting down Don Moreno, and as late as issue 265, Zartan sided with Snake Eyes and kind of on the outs with Cobra Commander. That's where you find herself to this day. Zartan is also in UK's Battle Action Force continuity, where he is a favorite of Cobra Commander, much to the chagrin of the twins, Tomax and Zaymon. In the Sumbo cartoon, Zartan's voiced by Zach Hoffman and is often at odds with Destro and, yep, there's that sunlight thing again. Cobra Commander hires Zartan frequently, but just as frequently he runs away when the situation becomes too dire, another characteristic that differentiates him from his comic book counterpart. Okay, I think my favorite episode from the series with him, and we can't do a video like this without 
without mentioning it is when he becomes the lead singer of Cold Slither, a band so metal their lyrics hid subliminal messages. It was it was fun. Fun episode. On Resolute, he was voiced by Steve Blom, and by the way, Blom lended his voice to Spike Spiegel, Cowboy Bebop, and Zeb from Star Wars Rebels. Zartan briefly appears in the movie where he helps Cobra free Serpentor, and Arnold Vosloo pro- plays Zartan in Rise of Cobra and Retaliation, the live action film, but he looks completely different there. The only similarity is the name. He's also represented by Jonathan Price's president. How? Well, nanomites, of course. Anyway, that's it for this one, my friends, the story of Zartan. As always, I look forward to your thoughts and comments down below, your corrections. <laughs> I love reading those. Feel free to subscribe to be a part of all of our videos, new and old, and share this with your friends. It helps you, it helps me, and hey, it helps the algorithm. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.